I still cry when I read this essay. Um, yeah, I wish my rough drafts were this good. Narrative structure. So narrative structure is for students who have faced a particular challenge and who learned a lot, you know, by, by going through, working through that challenge. So I'm going to share with you uh, an example essay, which I'll read through kind of quickly. And I'm going to share with you the basic structure. This is a student who took my course, which I'll tell you about in a few minutes. Last year, she, this is what she called a rough draft. So look at her rough draft. The narrow alleys of Mardin, Khyber, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, Pakhtunkhwa, Pakistan, where I spent the first seven years of my life were infiltrated with the stench of blood and helplessness. I grew up with Geo News Channel, with graphic images of amputated limbs and the lifeless corpses of uncles, neighbors, and friends. I grew up with hurried visits to the bazaar, my grandmother in her veil, and five-year-old me outrunning spontaneous bomb blasts. On the open rooftop of our home, where the hustle and bustle of the city were loudest, I grew up listening to calls to prayer, funeral announcements, gunshots. I grew up in the aftermath of 9-11, confused. So she's awakening our sounds, like we, she's drawing us into the essay by letting us hear what she heard. Like the faint scent, and now she's using smell, of mustard oil in my hair, the war followed me to the United States. Here I was the villain, responsible for causing pain. In the streets, in school, and in Baba's taxi cab, my family and I were equated with the same Taliban who had pillaged our neighborhood and preyed on our loved ones. War followed me to freshman year of high school, when I wanted more than anything to start new and check off to-dos in my bullet journal. Every time news of a terror attack spread, I could hear the whispers, visualize the stares. Instead of mourning victims of horrible crimes, I felt personally responsible, only capable of focusing on my guilt. The war had manifested itself in my racing thoughts and bitten nails when I decided that I couldn't and wouldn't let it win. Turning point. A mission to uncover parts of me that I'd buried in the war gave birth to a persona, Sher Khan, the Tiger King, my radio name. As media head at my high school, I spend most mornings mastering the art of speaking and writing lighthearted puns into serious announcements. Laughter, I've learned, is one of the oldest forms of healing a survival tactic necessary in war and peace too. So there's some things that are already just blowing my mind that I just want to pause and go back and talk about. I mean, this were, these were incredible challenges that she had to overcome with. And what was particularly ironic and painful is that here she came to escape this war. And then it was actually turned on her where she was seen as the aggressor, the one being violent, which must have been incredibly painful. But in high school, so she says she tries to uncover parts of herself that she'd buried, writing lighthearted puns. She comes up with this persona. During sophomore year, she says, I found myself in international human rights, a summer course at Cornell that I attended through a local scholarship. I went into class eager to learn about the laws that protect freedom and came out knowledgeable about ratified conventions, the International Court of Justice, and the repercussions of the Srebrenica massacre. To apply our newfound insight, three of my classmates and I founded our own organization dedicated to youth activism and spreading awareness about human rights violations. Fight for human rights. Today, we have seven state chapters led by students across the US and a chapter in Turkey too. Although I take pride in being editor of the Golden States chapter, I enjoy having written articles about topics that aren't limited to violations within California. Addressing and acknowledging social issues everywhere is the first step to preventing more. We're getting some of her core values right after the turning point. So this is what she's done about it. Early this year through KQED, a Bay Area broadcasting network, I was involved in a youth takeover program and I co-hosted a Friday news segment about the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals policy, aka DACA, the travel ban, and the vaping epidemic. Within a few weeks, my panel and interview were accessible worldwide, watched by my peers in school and family thousands of miles away in Pakistan. Although the idea of being so vulnerable initially made me nervous, I soon realized that this vulnerability was essential to my growth. Oh, I love the insight here. So one of the things she's doing too, and I'm not getting super much into the details, but is she's answering so what in her paragraphs. At the end of this paragraph up here, she says she addressing and acknowledging social issues everywhere is the first step to preventing war. So we're getting like some of her core values there. And here she's saying the idea of vulnerability is core to this whole deal. Here's her final paragraph. She says, I never fully escaped war. It's evident in the chills that run down my spine whenever an untimely call reaches us from family members in Pakistan and in the funerals still playing on Geo News. But I'm working towards a war-free life, internally and externally. God, that's beautiful. For me and the individuals who can share in my experiences for my family and for the forgotten Pashtun tribes from which I hail. For now, I have everything to be grateful for. War has taught me to recognize the power of representation, to find courage and vulnerability, and best of all, to celebrate humor. I still cry when I read this essay. Um, yeah, I wish my rough drafts were this good. I feel bad like even talking about the structure because I just want to like sit for a minute and just like enjoy the amazingness of this human story. Um, but 
Here's the structure. She begins with what's called status quo. Status quo is essentially giving us what is the context for how you grew up or the opening of the story. In this case, the status quo is like a war-torn upbringing. She grew up in war, you know, and, and, and we usually this inciting incident raises a question like, is, is this going to help her get away from this war? And actually what raises the stakes in this story is that it doesn't, in fact, it makes it a little bit worse because now she's seen as the aggressor. She makes a choice. This is the moment of truth or the turning point to do something about it. She starts to advocate for herself. She develops this persona through this radio program. Uh, I think it was a podcast also that she created. Share calm and she uses like you know develops her sense of humor and finds herself being vulnerable and the new status quo you know towards the end of the essay is she's working towards a war free life she's not saying that everything's perfect she's saying now you know internally and externally she's gained some appreciation for the experiences that she's been and the values that it's brought into her life and so we get a clear sense a pretty clear sense that her new status quo who she's become is different from her status quo here's a challenge I faced here's what I did about it here's what I learned and it tells it in a chronological causal way, you know, war in our lives. So that led to us coming to the US, which led to people, you know, bullying me, which led to me developing this persona to deal with it, to like develop some control, a locus of control. So if you've written, uh, you know, if you've experienced tough challenges, I recommend this narrative structure. If you're more like, ah, I don't know, I feel like I'd be forcing it to talk about challenges. I haven't faced war and been persecuted. And I'm not saying that that has to be the only challenge. Some students write about being really shy. Um, and you could potentially use this structure. Mm -hmm.